It's all very well going after that metal-faced Mechon, but shouldn't we have some kind of plan? How about checking out Colony 6? Colony 6? The only other Homs colony left. Colony 6 is on the way to Sword Valley, where there's supposed to be a Mechon base. If that's where they came from, maybe the people in Colony 6 saw something. Good point. They might even know something about that metal face Mechon. So, we go past the Magmel ruins and up through Tefra Cave. Then we should arrive at the Bionist Knee. Yeah, and if we can get to the Knee, it ain't far to Colony 6, right? Sounds like a plan. Let's head to Colony 6. Let us begin our journey. Welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles. Last time, Shulk took the Monado in Dunban's dead to destroy the Mechon attacking the colony, but wasn't able to stop the metal-faced Mechon that killed Fiora. This time, we set out for Colony 6 to begin our search for that Mechon. But despite this heartfelt goodbye, we have a tutorial that has popped up here. Gem crafting is now available if we go to the commercial district. I don't know why they put this here, Telling us to go back into the colony after that heartfelt goodbye, but they did. And there's quite a few other things in the colony that are really important that I'd like to go over here as well. But for now, let's just take care of the gems. Hello there, youngin. I got something that might interest you. Rather, something to tell you, it's about this here furnace. When creatures die, they leave either crystals behind. Everyone knows that, don't they? Either particles in the body are- oops, that stuff's too complicated. <laughs> just remember the creatures drop either crystals when they die. But I haven't got to the best part yet, ready? Don't be shocked. This furnace compresses ether crystals and removes impurities. You use it to make ether gems. What, no reaction? We've kind of already played around with this stuff because Desiree gave us a few the other day. <laughs> Kids these days, you don't know how amazing this thing is. You can use the furnace to make ether gems. They've got powers of ether crystals, but highly condensed. Those gems can give you all sorts of powers. They're great for use in the home or by the defense force. Not really sure how they'd be useful in the home besides just looking cool, but okay. So you can put them in slots on your armor or weapons, like we went over before. Yeah, not much of a reaction. Like I said, we already played around with the stuff. And for listening to his very long speech, he gives us two gems. Strength up two, which is good for Shulk, and HP up two, which is good for Ryan. So two really good gems right off the bat. And like before, you just pick an empty slot on your weapons and select whichever gem you want to equip. You can swap them out, of course, and all that good stuff. Now, I want to talk to him one more time. How are your ether gems? Oh, the look on your face. Looks like you've been bewitched by the wonder of gems. I almost thought that said a wonder of germs. All right, yes, we want to make our own gem. Just in time, I have a treat in store for you. I've just fixed the furnace. She's warmed up and ready to go. You don't need to pay me. I could never charge friends of the great hero Dunban. Great to know that we stand on our own merits and you're not just sucking up to friends of Dunban. <laughs> so yes, we have gem crafting available to us now. We can now craft different attributes to put into our weapons. Now, this can get a little bit complicated, but I want to go over this in great detail because this is a very important part of equipping yourself. So bear with me because this could go on for a little bit. First off, there are five different ranks of crystals that you can collect. They are locked to one another. Uh, for example, one crystals can only be used the other one crystals. Every crystal has its own qualities, which you can see off to the left indicated by a percentage. You are combining crystals together to make gems and any qualities that exceed 100% will determine which quality the gem that you make will have. Only eight crystals may be in the furnace at a time, so you want to be sure to hit at least 100% in one attribute before you go on with the process. After the crystals are selected, you then need two party members to do this job. One will be the shooter, the other will be the engineer. Shooters have various different effects. Shulk goes into fever easily when crafting. Fever means that the resulting gem that you create will be much better than what it could have been, but it's completely random. Ryan, on the other hand, will always make a better gem if there is a strong flame. What is the flame, though? Flames are decided completely automatic, so you don't have any control over this. But this is where the engineer comes into play. The flame strength will determine how good of a gem that engineer is able to make. As you can see, Shulk will always turn out a good or an average one no matter what it is, so he's a really safe bet. Whereas Ryan doesn't make very good gems if there is a gentle flame or medium, but he does an amazing job if there is a strong flame. How fitting that Ryan would be very all or nothing doing the job of the engineer. <laughs> and as you can see off to the right, flames themselves have different effects. A strong flame will greatly increase the strength of one quality in the crystals you're using to make the gem. A medium flame slightly increases the strength of all qualities in the crystals you're using, and then a gentle flame fills the cylinder gauge. What is the cylinder gauge, though? As you're working through the crafting, it may fill up. As it fills up, you will get ether cylinders. These are basically just your leftovers, so that attributes that didn't make it to 100% don't get wasted. You can put them right back in the furnace and make gems out of these. It's basically a way of combining your crystals so they don't eat up too much inventory space, even if you can't make a gem out of them. So, 
right off the bat, looking at my crystals, I have some agility up. I have some agility up crystals that I'm kind of a fan of, to be honest. I can get up to 98% with these four, and that's the key. You want to get as close to 100% as possible without going over, and then you want to put in whatever crystal is really, really powerful. For example, if I do this one, I have 196% agility up. So I think I'm going to go for that. I think I'll give Ryan the job of engineer because he specializes in strong flames, and I'd love it for the agility up to get boosted here. But even if it doesn't, I'll still get good cylinders from the other ones, and I like ether and strength, so the only way this would be bad for me is if I got the strong flame boost on auto heal up. Now, you can see that Shulk and Ryan's affinity is being brought up here. Depending on how much these characters like each other, they will be able to make better gems. I get more chances to make a good gem. I get 5 to 8, whereas if they only had yellow affinity and I didn't do all those quests, I would not have nearly as many shots at this. So, not only do characters liking each other have a difference in battle, it also has a difference when making things for your equipment. Hopefully you got all that, and hopefully I explained it well enough. Now, before we go on with crafting gems, I don't mean to hang us up too long, but brace yourselves for the amazing greatness that is voice acting during gem crafting. Oh god, it's incredible. Just listen. It sounds like they are freaking toasting each other over a spot of tea. I don't mean to get into stereotypes too much, but it really does. Have a listen for yourself. I'm all over I've that. I've got it. To you. There we go. Woo. Alrighty. To me. Nice one. Alrighty. To me. Woo. To you. To me. Woo. Alrighty. To me. Nice one. Alrighty. To me. Woo. To you! There we go! Alright! Hey, this ain't bad! Alright! To you! To me! Oh, whoa! Joking aside, um... Damn! Okay, so I got some cylinders. I get to choose one of them. I think I'm gonna go over this ether up right here. And, um, the reason why I went whoa was because I did such a good job picking out my crystals that I was able to get an agility up 2 gem, even though I only used level 1 crystals, or rank 1 crystals, when making it. In some cases, you might be able to get that. I think I'll craft a few more gems, but that was really all I wanted to do in that way. I got an incredibly good gem this early on for that. Um, because one thing I haven't mentioned is that Monado Buster, one of the most powerful attacks on Shulk at the moment, is actually based on ether damage, not strength damage. Oh, and if you don't want to listen to these absolutely hilarious quotes, just hold down the A button while it's crafting. Crafted quite a few gems. The gem man here is telling us that we can find ether deposits throughout the Bionis and get crystals that way, but we haven't run into anything like that yet. <laughs> you don't look too excited. <laughs> we got learning the craft for crafting our first gem. And there we go. So, was that all I wanted to take care of? Well, since we're back here in the colony, not quite. There's a few small things that I would like to take care of before we go. As for the gems that I crafted, I do want to save that for the end of the video just so I'm not constantly shuffling through my equipment and everything like that. I'm gonna change the time to 10 right here, and I want to talk to this fine old lady, Cheryl. Oh, hello. Please, you must listen. My son went missing years ago, and I think I know where he went. What is it? You're looking down. You're looking down in the dumps. Gee, I wonder why. Way to be insensitive, Ryan. I found something that belonged to him. That's how I know he's he's gone. He's gone, and he's never coming back. And the worst of all, I don't have his remains to return to the Bionis. Could you find his other effects? I'd like to know how far he went. You can count on me, old lady. Hmm, is that so? Do I look like someone who'd make jokes? You kinda do, not gonna lie. It's nice to see there are still fine upstanding youths in the world. You remind me of my son. My son said he was aiming to reach the Bionis head, silly boy. I don't know how far he got, but I'd like it if you found his effects. We have mementos of a lost son, now. We need to find three items that her son took with him on his trip to the Bionis Head. These, as you would guess, are all very far out there, and there's a chance we might run into these on our long journey to Colony 6, so I figured that it just kind of made sense for us to grab it right here. So, is that it? Well, not quite. First of all, I'd like to bring attention to a couple of other things that might be important to you. You might notice that there is rubble all over the colony. Yeah, it wasn't just you know, over one day and the colony was unaffected by the attack physically. No, there's rubble over the colony and you might even notice some buildings are destroyed. Uh, if you talk to this guy, you're heading outside, make sure you're armored up. You don't have to look now, but the shop's got new equipment in. So let's go check out the store. I don't think I'm gonna need anything that's there, but I might as well go check it out. And, uh, oh, oh wow, I thought that guy's leg was like stuck under that pile of rubble for a second. That would have been bad. So if we check the shop, 
There are indeed better pieces of equipment for us here, but none of these are really that useful to me, honestly. I don't need any of these, and I have pretty good equipment for doing all those quests, so I don't think I'm going to buy anything. But one thing that I wanted to draw attention to is these. These are art books. No, not little books you draw with crayons. Buying these books will let you raise your arts above level 4. These are all the arts you have available to you right now to do this with. Even though I have the money for it, I won't be buying any of these just because I don't really have a need to right now, but I wanted to make note of them just in case you want to. So all that's fine and good. Next up, I want to go into my inventory. You might notice that there is gem crafting right here and we cannot select it. That might open up a little bit later. We have the Collectipedia. Because we're going to be leaving Colony 9 for quite a while, as made clear here, I want to fill in my Collectipedia. Whenever you complete a row, you'll get a page. <laughs> Whenever you complete a row, you will get a prize. In this case, I got a Quick Step 3 gem. Equipping that will make a character move more quickly. That'll be good for me because I want to move around quicker in these videos just because of how huge these areas are. So I definitely want to equip that next time I shift around my stuff. Now, for completing an entire page, you will get a really big reward. And you can trade for most of the items in the Collectopedia. So I want to make it known that at the end slice of these videos, if we complete an area, I will be showing you every single possible trade for that page of the Collectopedia that I completed in that video. Just letting you know. I personally am only missing one item, and I happen to know who trades that, so I'll meet you guys over in the residential district. Oh, almost didn't acknowledge the achievement, one is never enough for putting your first item in the Collectopedia. Truer words have never been spoken when it comes to collecting stuff, or eating chips, really. But uh, anyway, there was only one collectible that I didn't get, and I happen to know who trades that one item under that insect row that I don't, ha that I don't have there. Francois, let's do this quickly. Uh, interesting words, sound like I'm trading some kind of commodity. Well, actually I am, though, but you know what I mean. So, when trading, you just select the item they have in their inventory that you want, and you have to give them an item of equal or greater sale price. You can get equipment and even gems this way for actually pretty cheap. A lot of equipment through trading is really cheap. I just tend to go to the stores because it's more convenient. She's got the Sorrow Beetle. That's 4,500 G, and I only have three items that are worth enough for that. I'm typically going to go with whichever item, you know, has the lowest sale price. This one's an equivalent trade, so let's go for that. Sorrow Beetle for the Snowplate. Let's do this again sometime. Uh, again, interesting language. All right, equivalent exchange, just like Full Metal Alchemist. And that completes my Collectopedia. Time to put in that one last item, and there we go, 100%. By completing that row, we get Regnus Gauntlets, and for completing an entire area, our reward is a Carbon Driver for Rhine. Get used to this. For whatever reason, whenever you complete pages in the... No, do not leave that item behind, holy crap. Whenever you get items for doing that collector's mentality... I keep getting interrupted by this game's humor. Whenever you get 100% in an area, I swear to you, it's always for Ryan. It's either it's specific to Ryan or it's something that's really useful for Ryan. I guess they just really, really like Ryan. Then again, I'm not really any different. So, um, while we're here in the residential district, there is one quest that we never completed. That is Collection Quest 3. And would you know it, Dionysus here trades Rainbow Zirconias, which we need for that. Now, I've picked up a Rainbow Zirconia before, but because I stuck it in the Collectopedia, it's no longer in my inventory. Ryan did his best to name this. Reflects like a pretty rainbow. Don't you mean a pretty rainbow? Okay, no, I won't do that too much here. Okay. Uh, I do have to say, I like the item descriptions and... Oh, Fiora delightfully named this. A fresh leaf that quietly glows. Uh, we have a kneecap rock there. God, I do not want to trade away that kneecap rock because it's actually a pretty rare item, though, but I don't think I have much of a choice. Uh, this leaf mystery right here, I'll trade that away. And as you can see, it is worth 5880G. So, definitely a valuable item. If I were to give him an item that is worth loads more, he's like, oh, this is nice. I guess I should give you this in return. So he gave me an extra item, a Tokilo Swing. This is what's known as overtrading. When a trade is not fair in your favor, they will make it fair by giving you an additional item. Sometimes you can only get quest items and trades through doing this, and when that's the case, it will be marked in the bottom bar as you would expect. Back into the trades, though, I really don't want to give up my kneecap rock, but I do want to complete this quest just so we'll have knocked out everything there is to do here in Colony 9 that I wanted to do. So I think I will do it. Uh, you might notice that the Rainbow Zirconia there has an orange exclamation mark on it. Thing is, whenever you presently need an item for a quest, it is marked with one of those in your inventory. Therefore, you can never accidentally trade or sell an item that you need for a quest. It is so, so nice, and I wish everything did that, because I've done that so many times in other games, and, ah, uh, it's so much better here. Ugh, but my Xeno freakouts aside, we are all done here. All collectibles, all quests that I wanted to knock out for now, and we tried out gem crafting. I can't think of anything better to do than open up the maps, select Tefra Cave, and let's go to the Magmel Ruins. 
All right, we are on our way to the Bionis Knee before heading to Colony 6. You might notice there are stronger enemies here in Tefra Cave now. That is very tempting to go down there and pick those item orbs. That's really addicting, like I've said before, but I think I'm going to hold off. And you might notice that the Defense Force has set up... I don't know what I'd say, your setup station, setup shop, I don't know. But uh, either way, we have a Defense Force soldier here with a quest for us. Hello. Oh, you're just in time. Of course I'm just in time. I'm Ryan. <laughs> Couldn't resist. I think my partner went to go check out the cylinder hangar. I'm worried he's not back yet. Ah. Uh, didn't you see the strange machines there when the Mechon attacked? I'm really worried. Can you take a look for me? I'm, re I'm really worried. Although if things turn out nasty, you can always jump into the lake. <laughs> but that's also pretty scary. Yeah, no kidding. But how about a defense force buddy? There we go. Missing in action. We can get two pieces of equipment for that, so that is really good. And even though the Defense Force soldiers don't really have names, they aren't counted as generic quests by any means. They are actually proper quests that people can comment on. Here we are. Hello. Why is he worried about me? He's always worrying about something or other. You can see I'm fine. Ain't nothing wrong here. Wow, sharp tongue. We just came here to check on you. There's no point. Wow, he can just carry on. What an ass. I'm sorry, but, like, there's no other way to put that. Like, his friend's worrying about him. He's just like, eh, he worries too much. He can just go on worrying. Yeah. All right, well, I guess we might as well see what this guy's got for us. Ah, oh, no, what am I going to do? I was supposed to make sure I kept it safe. That's it. I must have dropped it in Tefra Cave. What is it? You're looking down in the dumps. He just said what the problem was, Ryan. I know that you got a bit of a thick skull, but... Anyway, it seems that he's lost his pendant. I've looked everywhere, but I can't find it. Was it really that important? My girlfriend gave it to me for a luck when I joined the force. Ah, oh, yeah, I remember. You really love that thing. I think it's coming back to me. I was near Vilia Lake in Tefra Cave, and rocks started falling. O okay, wait. You were in a rock slide, running for your life. And you're just now realizing that could have been where you dropped your precious belonging? Uh, okay, fine. This guy's an interesting character, I'll say that much. We got a new quest, the Lost Pendant, which we haven't been to Vilia Lake before where he said he lost it, so we're probably going to need to keep an eye out for that as we venture deeper into the cave. And speaking of going deeper into the cave, that's what we're doing now. We just need to head up this ramp and head in the door. But as we're doing that, I want to put something into perspective really quick. Every single thing we have experienced so far, everything, this has all been just the first town. Remember that. That should put into perspective how huge of a beast this world is. And that's all I wanted to say before moving forward. Let's take the first major step on our journey. This door, it was closed when we came past before. But it's open now. Maybe it was programmed to open up in case of mech on emergency. The way to the Bionis knee is just ahead. You ready? Yeah, let's go. And at last, this door finally fulfills its purpose of being an automatic door. But that is still kind of fascinating how that alarm was going off, this door was locked, and those machines got dispatched all just before the mech on attack as if it was reacting to it somehow. But enough about the little details. You might notice that there are quests behind this door. We get a Defense Force soldier right here, and these are the generic quests of this area. Nobody's going to comment on these, and these are just simple. This one needs kneecap rocks now. I said that kneecap rocks were an important item for later. This is why. There are two kneecap rocks that you need to find in Tefra Cave for this one. And this is not even the only thing that you're going to need kneecap rocks for. You also need them for the Collectopedia, amongst other things. So that's three in total. Oh, hi. Problem is, they are not the most common item in the world. I was actually very lucky just to find one before. And the easiest trade that you can do to get them needs two stars with Colony 9, which you probably don't have by this point. So, yeah, this one might take us a little while to complete. She's got material quests for us, she has all kinds of other things for us, uh -huh. and yeah, she needs just one more thing. Frog smell and salt. Alright, there we go. Sorry about the cut there, just wanted to talk to her one more time and she kind of ran off. The door that's open now, but we got another problem. The ceiling's caved in along the route ahead that we used it before. We can't get any machinery in there, so we can't clear it. Seriously? I'd wager that that original route got you to Colony 6 about three feet away from where we're currently standing, give or take, but of course, nothing can ever be easy. An ether lamp. Don't traders use these things as guideposts? Yeah. We can follow them to the Bionis Knee. 
Okay. But if armed traders need guideposts, it must be pretty dangerous in here. Let's keep our wits about us. Definitely. I know he's just trying to be useful, but Ryan, you are a fine one to talk about keeping your wits about you. Just saying. Got a Night Tulip right there. Not really the funniest item name in the world right off the bat, though, but hey, I guess they can't be all gems. Only the gems can all be gems. <laughs> We're in Tefer Cavern, so we've reached a new area that we've never seen before, and you thought Tefer Cave was just going to be a bunch of linear pathways without any real branching paths or anything open, didn't you? Nope. <laughs> Ah, uh, it always just makes me so nice to be able to shatter people's expectations of JRPGs these days. I walk up to this, and this is our introduction of mining. Whenever you see crystals, you can then, um, well, mine the crystals from it, really. We just approach it and press A. Usually these are a lot more difficult to find, but they're being easy on us for this first one, and oh wow, I got a rare ether crystal on my first try, that's what that sound effect meant. So there we go, and we've exhausted the supply, so it's less pretty looking now. I can take them and sell them someplace, right? No? We got Titan's we got Titan's gift and raring to go for that and small I almost thought the small ice crystal was an achievement. I am totally smirt. Uh, all right. Well, we needed those brog smelling salts and we got a noble brog right here. I don't know what makes him so noble. I mean, he kind of just looks like a normal brog only albino, but oh well. Let's attack him. All right, Ryan, draw the aggro. Good. See, I'm, I'm curious to see how much backslash he's gonna do with the Monado. Oh wow, not bad. Over a thousand damage. Flick break? I resisted it. I was really hopeful I could inflict Toppa right here and have a good time just taking him out like that, but of course not. Alright. Uh, what do I want to do here? Uh, you know what? I'm probably just being a jerk to this wild animal that probably wasn't going to bother us anyway, but I'm going to use Monado Buster on him. There we go. And he's done. Do I get my smelling salts? Please tell me I do. No, nope. Mollusk Mucus. Mollusk Mucus. Interesting name. Sounds a bit like a tongue twister if you ask me. Well, he didn't have an item that we need, but we got Desert Crabbles right here that have another item we need with those Crabble Pinchers. Alright, um, Ryan, where are you? Okay. Uh, as a side note, I should mention, I did indeed equip that Quick Step Gem that I said I was going to be equipping, so if it seems like Ryan's taking a little time to keep up, that is because I have a Quick Step Gem and he doesn't, so he can fall behind a little bit. Got a Crabble Stone, not what I needed. And, wow, did I really just say that Ryan was taking time? It just happens. You can't help it. <laughs> Love the belly in the camera there. Everyone, let's go. That took an absolute eternity. I have no idea why it took me so long to find items that, quite frankly, aren't rare, but it did. Now, while I was around this area, I ran into this thing, Solid Konev. This is a unique monster that we don't have a challenge quest for, but I suppose we might as well take it out because it's here. Now, about these. There are unique monsters just like this one that, like I said, you don't have any sort of quest telling you to go kill it. You still want to hunt these, not just because of experience, but because you get something from it. Uh, oh wow, topple it already, and that Fang really wants to help out this guy, apparently. Uh, by defeating these, you will get things called Affinity Coins. Now, we can't really use Affinity Coins for anything quite yet, but we will be able to soon, and you want to get as many of these as possible. They are very, very helpful to you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use a Chain Attack right here. Just wanted to point out that you can do that. Backslash, and let's see how high I can get this going. Hammer Beats, and only two attacks, lame. Uh, yeah, because you only have two members of the party now, you can only do two attacks during a Chain Attack. All right, one affinity coin richer, two quests completed. We are all done at Tefra Cavern. We can now go on through the rest of Tefra Cave. Uh, great naming choices for these landmarks. That's not confusing at all. So while we're going ahead, I'd like to bring attention to exactly where on the Bionis we are right now because it was a little bit confusing to me the first time around. Basically, imagine that Colony 9 is inside of an indentation on the calf muscle of the Bionis, right on the back of the lower leg. And what we're doing is trying to get to the knee by burrowing through the center of the leg. So you can imagine how much stone there is above and below us right now. That should give you a pretty good idea of exactly where we are. But let's head even deeper into the cave. We got an item warp here. Uh, oh, a knee. Whoa, I got a kneecap rock. Damn, all I have to do is just say something is rare and I get it all the time. It's awesome. Uh, 
Sorry about the cut there, I just couldn't decide if I wanted to sneak past these sound type enemies or if I wanted to run past them and just risk getting attacked. I ultimately decided to go the sneaking route, so let's get on past here and get deeper into the cave. What the? Look at the emblem. They're traders from Colony 6. No wonder it's been so long since the last delivery. Ryan, they're injuries. They weren't made by no Mechon. It was probably the monsters that live here. Man, that's grim. I don't want to go like this. Not even killed by Mechon, just some monsters in a cave. They probably had families. Children. Maybe. It wouldn't surprise me. But why'd you say that? Oh, no reason. Ryan, shouldn't we return them to the Bionis? Huh? Oh, right. What's born from the Bionis is returned to the Bionis. That's the way of the Homs. That was way harder than I thought it'd be. I'm just about ready to collapse. Let's take a rest. If the monsters in here killed all these traders, we need to be at our best. I'm wide awake, so I'll take first watch. Thanks, man. The nap will do me good. Shulk, my turn. Awake already? Didn't sleep a wink. Oh, I still feel like I just did one of Vanguard's drills. <laughs> hey. Why do you think the Mechon attacked? Are we just food to them? Or what? Did we do something wrong? Sort of reminds me of the battle between the Bionis and the Mechonis. I wonder if it's anything to do with that. Well, it's hard to believe that living things are just a source of energy for machines. There has to be another reason. Mechon killed Fiora. Yeah. You know what? I'll never forgive them. I don't care what their reason is. Hmm. When it happened, the Monado showed me that Fiora was in danger, but I couldn't save her. It's not your fault. Just because the Monado showed you some future, that don't mean you could do anything about it. You did great. You fought them off. I couldn't have done that. You know, I've been thinking about it. Why you can use the Monado, I mean. Dixon told me. You're a survivor from the Monado expedition team that went out 14 years ago. There was a blizzard or something, and your mum and dad died. And then Dixon found you and brought you back. That sounds right. I was pretty young, so I don't really remember anything. Is that why you do it? Why you're always helping Dixon with his research and trying to figure out the Monado? Maybe. Part of me does see it as something to remind me of my mum and dad. But mainly, if it really is the sword that the Bionis used to kill the Mechonis, like in the legend, I want to work out its secret. That's the real reason. I've got it. You were chosen by the Monado. What? Chosen? Don't you see? Not even Dunban can handle it. It ain't chance that you can and he can't. <laughs> I'll take the next watch. You get some rest. Okay, I'll try. Night, Ryan. Do you wish to change it? Huh? The future.
It is every man's desire to change the future. Is that not so? Even if everything has been predestined, will you not oppose it? I... The Monado is now in your hands. The Monado will grow with you. If you can find the true Monado, the future is yours. The true Monado? Shulk! Uh, Shulk! Uh, uh, Ryan! Uh, Talk about a rude awakening. We have a whole army of arachnos attacking us, and their aggro is all on Shulk to start off. I'm gonna get over here and see if Ryan can draw them away. He uses Aura Burst, but it's not enough. All right, I think I better go for Shadow Eye. There we go. Instantly drained all that aggro away by just using Shadow Eye. That shows how helpful that can be. And with all these enemies, this is actually a bad situation that they are all on Ryan. You do not want Ryan taking damage from that many enemies all at once because he can only take so much. I'm gonna weaken this Director Arachno a bit, and there's a right way to fight lots of enemies. I'm gonna use Buster here to hit all these at the same time now that the Director is weakened. And then, follow up with Stream Edge! There we go! Was able to make quick work of the majority of them. Typically, I don't like fighting so many enemies all at the same time, but in a situation like this, we don't have much of a choice. There's a barrier off in the distance, so we couldn't run away. All right, just got this Director left. Uh, I think I will go for Buster, just because I can. All right, let's do that, and doesn't quite finish it off. Let's hit it one more time. And there's one left. I didn't even notice it off there. Oh, there it goes. Worker Arachnal. Let's hit it. There it goes. I'm sorry, Ryan. Don't worry about it. It looked like you were having a nightmare. Really? The Monado is now in your hands. The Monado will grow with you. If you can find the true Monado, the future is yours. The true Monado? Was I dreaming? What's with you? We'd better get a move on. I don't know. 